Jim Henson's Muppets have managed to stand the test of time, and I'm sure if you showed most people a picture of the Muppets, they can name a lot of them. We all have our favorite Muppets, and so I'm going to name the ones I personally find to be the most endearing, most funny, and most enjoyable personalities. Whether they're performing on stage, or riding bicycles, or interacting with their celebrity friends, I've often liked watching their antics. I should mention I did not include any Sesame Street Muppets, as that would make it difficult to narrow the list down to ten. It's time to play the music, it's time to light the lights, it's time to meet my top ten Muppets. Walter. This will probably be a controversial choice to the more traditional and purest Muppet fans, but I really thought Walter was a wonderful addition to the cast. The first Muppet fanboy, there was such a nice sincerity to him and the way he was written. You really understand the connection he feels with the Muppets and his want to be accepted among them. Peter Linz deserves a lot of credit for his voice and puppet work, and the way he balanced Walter's excitement and his insecurities. His story arc, as explored in the 2011 Muppets movie, was nicely told and his big standout moment on stage was especially sweet. Creating a new Muppet is an enormous responsibility, and Jason Segel and Nicholas Stoller were able to come up with a character I think will be just as timeless as the longtime core gang. Rolf. It's been often mentioned by those who knew him that Rolf is the Muppet closest to Jim Henson's actual personality, and I can see that. Like plenty of the Muppets, I will mention there's an immediately likable quality surrounding Rolf. There's a refreshing calmness in how he reacts to the wild antics of his friends, and he can sometimes be there to offer some helpful advice. His occasional one-liners would offer a laugh, and his enthusiasm for playing the piano also came through. One of my favorite scenes involving Rolf is in the Muppets Take Manhattan, where we see him working at a dog care center. Just seeing his connection with his fellow canines is touching, but also funny in how he deals with a snooty dog owner. I also love the scene in the Muppet movie, where he talks with Kermit at that lodge restaurant. It seems like whenever the other Muppets need a pick-me-up, Rolf is one of the first to give them a helping hand. The fact his close friends and family often compared Henson to the character is a testament to how highly they thought of him. Animal. The drummer for Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, he is definitely among the most wild and unhinged of the Muppets. It's not unusual for Animal to lose his mind and cause some amount of destruction, and it's almost always hilarious. Yet Frank Oz and the writers were able to develop Animal beyond outbursts, and the shows and movies would peel away and peek into his personality and what drives him. He's also a fantastic drummer, even if the others in Electric Mayhem feel the need to chain him to his set as an extra precaution. Even if there's a high likelihood he will eat his drums at the end of the song, his presence is always appreciated. He also proved helpful during the Muppet movie, when he grows to a massive size, scaring the villains away. There may be times when he tries to be in control, but we probably like Animal best when he's unchained. Beaker. Dr. Honeydew's hapless assistant, there's an immediately sympathetic angle of him, as he tries to deal with these wild experiments. Beaker is also extremely funny, largely helped by his constantly saying the word, meep. His design is also brilliant, as just looking at Beaker, you can see what his entire deal is. Throughout the course of the Muppets franchise, we do get to know the things he enjoys and everything that frightens him. The Muppet Studio has also successfully turned Beaker into a musical star, with hilarious renditions of Ode to Joy, Carmen, and Ringing of the Bells posted on YouTube. Just watching those produces a decent amount of laughs. If the intention was to make us feel sorry for Beaker, the Muppet crew definitely succeeded, as a lot of the time I just feel sorry for everything he has to put up with. Hey Beaker, if you happen to be watching this video, you are amazing. And I think it's about time you ask Dr. Honeydew for a raise, and a vacation, and to pay for your health insurance. Swedish Chef. Famous for his mock Swedish, he's probably among the most inventive Muppets, as he's a combination of puppet with real hands. That would allow for creative sketches, where the chef would attempt to create a feast for the other Muppets, which requires an incredible amount of coordination on the puppeteer's parts. His love and enthusiasm for cooking is just one of the reasons he is so endearing, 
even if the finished meal ends up being rather different than he originally envisioned. The chef's appearances often featured a lot of energy as things begin to go horribly wrong in the kitchen. Saying gibberish words seems like such a simple form of comedy, but it still requires the necessary delivery and timing, and Jim Henson and later Bill Beretta nail it with the Swedish chef. Statler and Waldorf. There's a tricky line in being critical without crossing over into mean. However, these two commungeons able to pull it off in a way that gets everyone laughing. Part of the joke comes from the fact that even though they don't find the Muppets funny, they somehow end up sitting at their favorite balcony for every show. They actually end up making fun of themselves just as much as when they heckle the Muppets and are also self-aware that they hate everything about the show. Their long-time interactions make them a classic comedic duo as they play off each other extraordinarily well. Their barbs are able to be hilarious because it mostly comes from a strange curiosity for what sort of performance the Muppets are putting on, even if they dread the experience. The Muppets can be corny and their shows can get out of hand, so it's inevitable there will be a few who find the acts bordering on annoying. Thankfully, Statler and Waldorf know the right way to respond to this, and the Muppet show would not be the same without these two in the balcony seats. Miss Piggy. Yes. She's a prima donna. Yes, she's prone to outbursts. And yes, she is always attempting to <clears throat> hog the spotlight. However, all those personality flaws just make Miss Piggy that much more interesting and a funny counterpart to her boyfriend Kermit. The way she's always trying to be the star of the show leads to plenty of hilarious moments, but Piggy has also proven herself to be a more than adept performer. Underneath it all is her love for Kermit which he tries to make work time and time again. Frank Oz deserves a large amount of credit for the character's personality, how she navigates her life with ferocity. Oz's facial expressions for Miss Piggy are also a key element of the character, and when she gets annoyed with the other Muppets, it's funny trying to see her either attempt to keep her cool or lose it entirely. She ultimately wants to perform just like the other Muppets, and as much as she does not want to admit it, she is just as bonkers as the rest of them. Fozzie Bear. Even though his main personality trait is making cheesy jokes and wordplay humor, there's something incredibly endearing about his love for cracking jokes whenever the possibility arrives. He is probably the closest to Kermit, and they have a nice bond, and very rarely do we see them argue or get irritated with each other. Of all the Muppets, Fozzie feels the most born out of the old vaudeville theater traditions, and that allows him to stand apart from the rest of the gang. He always finds good use for rubber chicken and even whoopee cushions, and nothing seems to stand in the way of a potential joke. He never lets Statlin and Waldorf's heckles get him down, and there's something wonderfully optimistic to whatever Fozzie does. He has even proven himself to be a talented dancer, and I especially love the little dance he does with Kermit in the Muppet movie. Fozzie feels like a friend who will always be there for you, often with a silly joke on hand. Gonzo. He's an interesting Muppet in that he's not a specific species, thus often referred to as a whatever. That sense of loneliness is something that has long been a staple of the character and allows him to be instantly sympathetic. His penchant for wild stunts allows for plenty of funny gags, as each becomes more outlandish than the last. He also has a sweet relationship with a chicken named Camilla, one that's portrayed as healthy and with plenty of love between them. Gonzo has taken on other personas through his career, too. He played Charles Dickens in Muppet Christmas Carol, serving as the narrator of the story and providing plenty of fourth wall jokes. Then there was Muppets from Space, which revealed Gonzo was an alien, although this seems to have been hand-waved in his later appearances. Something I find amazing about Gonzo is his puppeteer, Dave Goles, who has portrayed the character since his introduction in 1976. So I want to give a round of applause to Mr. Goles. Thank you for making Gonzo such a warm and likable personality. And finally, my favorite Muppet is... Come on. You've probably figured it out by now. Kermit the Frog. Is an obvious choice? Sure. But Kermit embodies so much of what made Jim Henson such a talented artist and puppeteer. He's a character that's able to be warm-hearted, but would also sometimes get irritated at these wacky personalities he has to manage. 
His outbursts were frequently hilarious, but he could also tap into our emotions whenever he performed the Rainbow Connection. It's hard not to smile upon seeing Kermit on screen, and Henson definitely played a major role. He always knew the right note with which to play that little frog, and always came up with the perfect facial expressions. Kermit also had that can-do spirit, and while he had moments that left him down and unsure of his future, some inspiration would hit him and he would find his courage. Kermit managed to be quite the unexpected hero, facing off against a restaurant owner who wanted him to advertise frog's legs, and an evil oil tycoon who wanted to shut down his beloved theater, among other impressive triumphs. Kermit the Frog has rightfully earned his place as a pop culture icon, and one we can always count on to lift our spirits. Now tell me, who are your favorite Muppets? Maybe Sam the Eagle, Scooter, Rizzo, Clifford, and Pepe the Prawn are among your favorites. I'm certainly very fond of them, even if they did not make the list. Let me know your favorites, and I'll see you next time.